I'm Olson Henry II, Foxtrot Tango Golf, and this is this evening's result. I have minus 56 dBm on 18.8 .8 gigahertz from a system that I'm feeding 10 dBm of 2.688 megahertz, which goes through this nice coax from here into this multiplier brick here. It goes through a multiplier and then to a 18 gigahertz amp power amplifier. Then comes out via this, which should be a 35 decibel attenuator for in VR 24. Sorry, not 24, 42. Goes to an VR 42 to SMA. Yeah, as apparently it's SMA, not. It, at least it looks like as a man, not 3.5, but oh well. Goes to this semi rigid into our analyzer. So, yeah, I would most definitely not call it time well spent. And we are on a tiny span here. We're on like 10 megahertz. And if we go much wider, let's say 9 gigahertz wide, we start seeing something else. Our wanted signal is here, but what is that? And if we press, press peak search, it's actually larger. It's 15.4 gigahertz. But how can that be? There's a <coughs> 18 slash 19 gigahertz bandpass filter inside of it. In fact, let's turn this off. And it stays. Yep, it's oscillating. And this, this is actually slightly below the wave guide cutoff of VR62, so it's in reality, this is stronger than this. It's going through the attenuator, the VR24 is nominally like 18 GHz, so it's getting closer to the cutoff. And if we take our span and go from let's say the current 9 gigahertz to something fun, let's say 12 gigahertz span, it gets even more fun. Oh, this time there's only that one. There's sometimes also a 20 gigahertz oscillation here. Let's tweak the output attenuation a bit and let's see if we can find it. And yep, with some output attenuator settings, well, which this has in a really convenient knob here, it starts and stops oscillating from time to time, which is of course supremely nice. Let's go to bandwidth and increase it a bit so it updates a bit faster. And let's see, there we go. Amplifiers truly oscillate when you don't want to, and then don't when you want to demonstrate it. But yeah, thankfully I have more of these, so I can just check if this one was a damaged unit or not. If they're all like this, then my dreams of using it as a multiplier might be gone. Or maybe the next one will not use the well, original built-in SAS stuff, and I'll use this Misar oscillator, which is nice, PLL locked, of course needs negative bias, but yeah, it's, it's a bit high, but yeah, it works. And yeah, we are, even if we are oscillating, we are not taking too much. This is what the IF card, which I spent tons of time trying to find out how to turn on the negative bias on the power amplifier side. Haha, there is no negative bias on the power amplifier side, only on the LNA side, on the receive side of it. So, haha, joke's on me, I spent hours trying to reverse engineer this and measuring the control signals and so on and trying to find, okay, how do I turn it on, because it has a negative voltage rail that comes in. There's also a 15 volt rail for some completely unknown reason, and the negative voltage actually is brought up here, but it's only used for the preamp. How fun. 
Yeah, sometimes stuff like this happens. Also, a good thing that I haven't thrown out all the mechanical stuff and just kept the small bulb sized stuff. But yeah, sometimes you just waste time. Well, or we'll learn some stuff. Like, you should take more and proper care of those, and you should just decap at least one of those ancient MMICs and just see what's inside. Especially those with handwritten part numbers. I'm getting total minus 12 dBm on the wanted frequency from it. But it no longer oscillates at all. Because apparently I had measured that it was 8.6 and then said it was 7 or something, but on 8.6 it stopped oscillating. At least with this output attenuation. Okay, yeah, spoke too soon. But at least if I don't touch that, which is the output attenuator, it's mostly stable. And the wanted frequency is now stronger than the harmonic. Sorry, not harmonic, but the oscillation stuff. And now that those get, we have all kinds of nasty stuff there. So yeah, it's not perfect and it's gonna be in more drive. So the other unit is gonna get this one. I'm targeting like around 80, 19 gigahertz because this is a 19 gigahertz model. I'm also hammering it much more strongly. I was told that the beam lead, dio beam lead diodes used uh, should only be driven with by like plus 10 dBm. Um, I'm giving them nine, nine more. It's not even a baker's dozen, but anyway, it gets in. It's getting a bit more uh, because there is a lumped element matching or filtering or so on before it, and there's also an output filter and so on, which if I bypassed it, I might get more, but it's gonna, it would be much dirtier because I would get all the harmonics. If we change the frequency a bit, we can see that the output does not grow that much if we go up higher. But, yeah, and you can see that it just completely drops off. There we get it back. Oh, yeah, with this multiplication factor, it peaks around there. So yeah, it's a 19 gigahertz amplifier. Who knew? Okay, let's go a bit higher. So. Here's another multi multipla multiple. Let's see if we can get more on this one. So nope, we are still much lower than we could be. And around here. This should be like third harmonic, so it should be stronger, but because there is this matching circuit at the input, uh, it attenuates 6 gigahertz quite a lot because it's a low pass type, designed to reflect as much power as possible back to the mixer on upper harmonics, so this gets a much lower level, unfortunately. So when we go back to bottom end, hmm, something shorting or dead. Hmm, yeah. Okay, or I might have might have just killed the MMIC used here. So yeah. Apparently it was, was in fact too much for it, maybe, or it just 
finally threw in the towel after being damaged before because now we're just sucking in current and we don't have any um, real amplification here this is it barefoot just slamming through it so yeah let's put it on 5 volts which worked in worked before connect that one yeah current limit it's in the current limit but it seems to get output was it shorting to the coax nope it just is like there is some gain but it is okay let's see how f high it goes before breaking okay now we are consuming half an amp what's our span 12 gigahertz so we should see if there is an oscillation so we might not destroy our spectrum analyzer nope so there is definitely some gain there let's see it's now 62 60 and minus 44 it might have actually also been that I just finally blew up the diode in the multiplier but that would not make sense because it I still have some usable output and if I lower it again drive it drops right down Yeah. Weird thing. Weird thing. And it's once again hammering against the current limit. This is looking more like a power amplifier, but it's just not amplifying it. So I'm not too happy at all. And there's no other stuff here. Actually, let's put the start frequency on like 10 megs and see if there's... There's also no like low frequency oscillations. It's just sucking down current and not doing much. Well, gee, thanks. Oh well, this was Osan Henry 2, Foxrot Tango Golf, and maybe next time we'll do it somewhat differently. <laughs>